Welcome back to the Arise interview where we speak to the newsmakers as well as ordinary people doing extraordinary things around the world and featuring the voices at the heart of the stories. I'm Charles and Yeg Gordon. Now, today we consider the work and growing popularity of one of Nigeria's new generation of writers, Abubakar Adam Ibrahim. His writing focuses on northern Nigeria, a region that's considered to be underrepresented in this country's English language literature. It's an imbalance that Mr. Ibrahim is attempting to address and is doing so splendidly. He's written critically acclaimed books which are set in the north, but which go beyond the insurgency and communal conflict. To underscore this point, his brilliantly crafted book, Season of Crimson Blossoms, is a romance between a widow and a young gangster set in a conservative Muslim community in northern Nigeria. It's been described as a powerful and compelling debut with shades of brutality or the pressures of a close-knit community and an older woman's sexuality explored in the context of the criminal underworld. Sounds captivating, doesn't it? And that's just one of his award-winning books. He turned to her and smiled, and she saw how handsome he looked, how his glazed eyes seemed so peaceful and yet so far away, how young he really was. Action Salah. He raised a joint at her before putting it back to his lips. He looked at her then, then turned back to the window and watched the sprinklers watering the lawn. God, what am I doing? Her voice was slow because she was addressing herself. What? I don't know. You're so young, Hassan. I don't know if this is right. Why must it be right? He spoke with a timbre in his voice. The one she had come to associate with what she had called his inner self, the dreamy eyed philosopher awakened by ganja fumes. Why must anything be right or wrong? Why can't things be just the way they are? She sighed. When you smoke this thing, I don't know what it does to you. You just talk rubbish sometimes. He smiled and put the joints to his lips. Maybe you should try it. God forbid. I want you to quit. It's killing you. He shrugged. What doesn't? I will die when I die. We all will. You understand? I'm enormously delighted to say that the creative writer and journalist Abubakar Adam Ibrahim joins me now in the studio. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Um, I've been browsing through some of your work. Mm -hmm. I have to congratulate you masterful stuff. Can it be said that your books are about human relationships, but they're set against bigger religious, political, and ethnic themes? Thank you, Charles. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, yeah, that's, that's a very um, wonderful question. Um, I like exploring relationships because everything is about relationships absolutely right? you know we're here working to make money because we have relationships we need to maintain and take care of um, but then these relationships do not uh, exist in a vacuum right they are connected to the political to the social to the cultural to all the things that shape our environment you know and uh, sometimes it's it's fascinating how issues that seem to come from outside mm have great significance on very intimate relationships that we have with people. And sometimes the very intimate relationships which we have with people, even if we don't consider ourselves important in the larger context of society, have huge ramifications on what happened in the society as a whole. So yes, uh, essentially I, I love interrogating and exploring relationships between different kinds of people. You know, um, mothers and their children, fathers and their sons and daughters, husbands and their wives, mm. and sometimes just random people who meet um, in random places. Well, I hope you're not thinking of me as... <laughs> no, 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 I'm just, I'm, you, I'm, you, I'm, you, I'm, you would be an interesting <laughs> subject. I, I'm yes. just kidding. So romance, <laughs> it can be said, is at yeah. the heart of a book like Season of Crimson Blossoms, mm -hmm. which is a masterpiece. I mean, okay. tell us about that book, because it's set in northern Nigeria, which mm broadly speaking, is a conservative region, yeah. and, and it's about a relationship between an older widow mm -hmm. 
and a younger drug dealer um, who is also a political thug. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I mean, sometimes when they call it a romance, I kind of like <laughs> you, you feel squeamish. I, I kind of cringe there. a bit, you know. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine because, because it's it's a uh, far more broader than that. Mm. It's um, an exploration of the constituents of the relationship that these people have. You know, um, she comes from a different background, from mm. different generation. He comes from a different generation as well, and they are from completely polar walls. You know, <coughs> but circumstances drive them together, and somehow they find that they have need of each other. Mm. You know, and they, they explore these needs, and uh, it's a personal decision between two grown people. They are all adults, but then somehow other people decide that oh, you know, this relationship is our business, and uh, decide to intervene and interfere, and uh, it builds up to what happened in the end. Um, so basically, it's it's about. Uh, I mean, you know, it's it's far more complex than just mm. a romance story. I understand you know. what you mean. So, mm. so, and, and and there's something of a contrast mm. um, in the book between what people want and what society expects yeah. of them. I think I heard you describe mm. it thus in one of your interviews. Yeah, you know, the fascinating thing is that uh, society always has expectations. Absolutely. On even when we don't realize it. Uh, and most times we make life choices based on this expectation that society imposes on us. Mm. Um, sometimes they go well, sometimes they don't. Uh, we have to live with the consequences of those decisions that we make. Uh, and sometimes when you defy society, even if it's in a remote way, such as the way Binter did, you know, society has a way of pushing back. Mm. And that is because... So more does society always have the last word? Not always. There, there are rebels who succeed completely in breaking mm. away. Um, and it's sometimes that thanks to those people who, you know, push the boundaries. And society has to expand right. to include their own peculiar needs. And does your book tend to highlight those people or, 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 or concede that society will have the final word? Well, <laughs> 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 that, that is a tricky, tricky question. Um, I'd like to look at it from the point of view that these are people who try to push the boundaries mm. as much as they could. And uh, even if that wasn't what they intended to do. For Binta, for instance, it wasn't like she woke up and said, oh, you know, I, I'm going to rebel mm. against everything that I've been brought up. It's just this innate desire in her that pushed her to act. And it was completely for a personal reason. It wasn't for any cause. Right. You know. But then somehow society has a way of imposing itself and imposed itself in this instance uh, to the extent that, you know, um, some people might want to say, well, society resets mm. the whole thing. Uh, but, you know, it's sort of like an idea. Once it's planted, it's hard to kill. And uh, <coughs> depending on the outcome of what Binter managed to achieve, mm. you know, um, other people have ideas, you know, and that's that's the thing with ideas. Once they are birthed, they just they take their own life. Absolutely. Um, it's almost dialectical, isn't yeah, it? Exactly. It sort of, it just keeps evolving. It, it evolves, basically, that's what it does. And what about your other equally acclaimed book, The Whispering Trees? I mean, mm. what's it about? Is it also about humans with universal concerns? Because it is a mm -hmm. collection of stories, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, with that, what I try to do the most is... Um, you know, it explores relationship, mm. but then at the same time, it explores the relationship between people and their fundamental desires. And when I say fundamental desires, I mean their grand aspiration, mm. if you like, even if sometimes they don't seem as grand. You know, sometimes it's just the mundane things. I want, I want to be happy. I want to have a good life. I want this. I want that. But then sometimes, you know, there are things that are the pillars upon which these dreams are built, mm. right? And then most times we don't take into consideration that these pillars are the things that support us. And then when something happens to one of those pillars, you see how quickly your dream collapses. Mm. You know, um, like, like Salim in the title story, for instance, right? He had his life figured out. He was going to be a medical doctor. He was going to marry this lovely woman he was in a relationship with. And then something happens, right? Uh, and he loses something. And that changes the trajectory of mm. his life completely. And I think for most people, that is, that is what happens. You know, you have this dream, you grow up, you know, building yourself to be something. And then one thing 
that you never anticipated knocks happens. you off the rail. Exactly, <laughs> and you go in a completely different direction. So, so, so is there, based on what you're saying, mm -hmm. a lot of heartbreak in your books, which is, in a sense, reflects the crushed hopes and ambitions and desires that you're you're talking about. Not, I mean, not in my book, in okay. life. Right. All right. Yeah, there's a lot of heartbreak in life, and I think um, liter literature reflects reality, and uh, sometimes this reality is not pleasant. And, and is yeah. that unique to, I'm not talking about the, the fact that, you know, there's heartbreak everywhere, mm -hmm. obviously there mm -hmm. is, I mean, it doesn't matter which part of the mm -hmm. world, but yeah. the type of heartbreak mm -hmm. and the circumstances that lead to heartbreak, are they unique to northern Nigeria? No, 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 set your book? no. No, that's that's. Uh, I mean, for me, that's that's very important because they are universal, mm. right? Um, I'm very conscious that I'm writing from the north, uh, about the north, but essentially, it's about people, mm. right? Well, uh, people are people. Aren't people they? are people, exactly, Absolutely. universally, you know. And for me, that's that's uh, the fascinating thing about literature. You know, it gives you the opportunity to explore these mm. things that probably we don't consider. Um, Someone in, say, Japan or the Caribbean, for instance, would have similar ambitions, similar dreams. Well, that's why people you know, around the world that can relate to your book. Exactly. You know, I, I think mean, that's that's the point. Absolutely, right? that's what uh, makes them so popular. Yeah, exactly. So we, we have these things you call uh, universal concerns, mm. right, um, or universal emotions that you explore or that happen to you, mm. right, and. Uh, they, they are basically universal. It doesn't matter what culture or what part of the world you no, come from. No, you're absolutely right. You know. Nevertheless, mm -hmm. your work is set in northern Nigeria. Absolutely. Does it delve at all into the insurgency and kidnap and banditry and killings that are rife mm. in that region? Or do you yeah. consciously avoid all that and focus instead on people who want to live and love, but happen to be in those circumstances? Um, you know, my writing reflects reality, even when I explore magical realism, mm. you know, but I can't run away from social realism because that's fundamental. And like I said earlier, everything is not, nothing is in a vacuum, mm. right? Um, everything is surrounded by something else. Um, with my latest book, for instance, uh, Dreams and Assorted Nightmares, um, I haven't seen know. that one, but oh, okay. I'm, I'm going to get it. Yeah, we should we should sort that out. Yeah, you know. But <laughs> fundamentally, um, this things happen. It's not about the insurgency per se, but mm. it's about what, in some aspects, in some of the stories, right? It's about what the insurgency has done to the lives of people, right? So there's uh, <coughs> a veteran who had uh, served in the war, and. Uh, was sort of physically damaged, so he had to come back, leave the war, and start trying to rebuild his life with his wife. And then something else happens, you know. But for me, it's important that that background is there because mm. there are people like that who we really haven't acknowledged. Absolutely. Right? There are people who are giving their lives for this country, who have been suffering, who have been injured, some of them permanently incapacitated. And then, you know, we just forget that they exist. But for me, it's important that those people kind of make an appearance in literature, that we document their experiences as humans. That's yeah. a very important point. Absolutely. So briefly, because we've got to take a break, mm. would you say that your books are opening up northern Nigeria to the rest of the country? I hope so. I hope so. Because I feel like uh, we really don't understand each other in this country. We don't. Mm. Um, well, I understand you. <laughs> <laughs> because you've read some of my books, right? Um, but the, the, the thing is this, um, you access people through their stories, mm. right? Um, we know a lot about the Igbo culture and the traditions because we've read Chino Achebe, we've read Jomanda, we've read people like that. It's the same thing with the West, right? But for, for the North, it's mostly based on stereotypes. Well, right. let, let's talk mm -hmm. about that when we come back. Absolutely. Stay with us. You're watching The Arise okay. Interview. Plenty more still ahead as we continue our chat with Abubakar Adam Ibrahim, one of a new generation of Nigerian writers that have broken through internationally. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Charles Enyegolu. Now, my current guest is the Nigerian creative writer and journalist Abubakar 
Adam Ibrahim, one of a new generation of Nigerian writers that have broken through internationally and are writing a new Nigeria. His novel, The Whispering Trees, won the BBC African Performance Prize for Prose and was shortlisted for the Kane Prize for African Writing. And his award-winning, internationally acclaimed season of Crimson Blossoms took the Nigeria Prize for Literature, Africa's biggest literary award. Amidst all the global acclaim his books have been receiving, the German broadcaster Deutsche Welle described him as a northern Nigerian literary provocateur. And the creative writer and journalist Abubakar Adam Ibrahim is still with me in the studio. Thank you very much indeed for staying with us. I, I'm curious to know mm. how you take all these characters and interconnect them in, in your books. Because in a world that is so fluid, how do you research and decide what to hone in on? Um, I let life decide, mm. you know. Um, I mean, sometimes you could be like the most important person in your town, but your, the most important appointment you have would depend on someone completely random. I, um, you might be going somewhere and you have a bus tire and you need a vulcanizer to make you get to that place. And, and that is how people connect, mm. right? And for me, it's interesting exploring these connections, right? Beyond the ordinary. Uh, where's this person coming from? What's the background? Wh in what mood, in what state is his mind in when the two of them encounter? And what is the possibility mm. that could That's arise That's deeply from philosophical, <laughs> isn't it? I mean, you're a deep well, person, mate. Well, I mean, I mean, the thing is, you know, literature gives us that mm. opportunity to deconstruct reality and put it back together again in ways that that would make sense to mm. us, you know. Um, and and, and you, you then take all those mm -hmm. people and all those characters and yep. all those happenstances mm. and use your imagination to connect the dots and keep us, the readers, engaged and entertained. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Thank you. We are always fascinated by life, you know. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, if you take, for instance, a bus ride, mm. you know, you see all these characters coming from different places and uh, somehow they strike up a conversation and it goes from zero to 60 <laughs> in, in, in a matter of seconds, right? And then the fascinating thing is that they come to a position where you feel as if there's going to be a physical fight. Mm. And then one person makes a random joke, and that's, that's it. Everything dissipates, and everyone goes this way, happy. Mm, tension you know, Exactly, you know. So for me, all these things are fascinating, and it's important to document how we live. Because I feel for me it's important that in the next uh, 200, 300 years, when they excavate what remains of us, mm. that they won't only see, oh, Boko Haram killed thousands of people. That's, we lived, we were happy. We had issues with each other, but we are still able to laugh, so to love, and to do other things together. You know, that's a very powerful statement. And, and do you feel like today, after a number of years mm. of writing, um, although you haven't been doing it for too long, let's face it, in the scheme of things, but after a number of years of yeah. writing, you're you're now seen and understood enough. Mm. Um, through the ways that you've portrayed the characters in your books. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, um, I have been writing for a while. <laughs> okay, well, let's talk about... Okay, may maybe what I meant to say is that yeah. your writing has been recognized yeah. um, in the last few years. Mm. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, it's... Uh, every writer aspires to be read, mm. you know, um, I mean, what would and be the point if you're not read, I suppose? Well, I mean, some people are content just writing. <laughs> you know, I, I was content just writing from the beginning, and right. that was how I started, which is why I write without pressure. Well, that's, that's a know. good thing, isn't it? I, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Because I've seen people who are taking into consideration this fact that, oh, I'm desperate to be published. Yes. And for them, that is the validation. But for me, the validation is in the quality of the story you tell. Yeah, that's a very mm -hmm. important distinction. It is very important, yeah. So, so what about your own story beyond your books and the characters? Not as in, interesting in, as my Well, to us it is. I mean, just, just, just trace your life back to your childhood yeah. for us. I mean, where did you grow up and what was your family like? I was born in Joss. Um, 
central Nigeria. Mm. Um, I love that place. Beautiful place. I've been it's, there. It's a wonderful place. I mean, it's a place that fascinates everybody. Mm. I remember meeting this uh, North Koreans, right? And uh, I was supposed to have a meeting with the ambassador, and they had to do this vetting thing. Mm. And they were pretending they weren't doing the vetting. So they like come, one person comes and starts a conversation. Oh, where are you from? Right? And then the moment you mentioned Joss, they go, oh, Joss, Joss. <laughs> <laughs> there used to be this place it's called Hill Station. Is it Hill Station or something? Some Hill Station Hotel. H hotel, yeah. 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 I, I stayed there. Oh, really? Lovely, lovely. I mean, yeah, I love the rocks. Place. I mean, amazing place. It's, it's fascinating. It's yeah, fascinating. it really is. I think there's something special about that place. You know, lots there of is. creative people have come from Joss. Yeah, it's, it's uh, a yeah. lovely place. It's fascinating. But what about your family? Um... I, I grew up with my mom and dad and um, four, three of my siblings. We had... Um, Did you say 14 or three? <laughs> Not that much. <laughs> my father wasn't that prolific. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, um, so the, the four of us, um, you know, eventually, and then uh, two more came later on, uh, right. but we're already... Um, Fairly older. grown. Yeah, we were grown by then, so, you know, the bonding was different. Um, yeah, so that, that was it. It was an interesting childhood. It was, uh, it had its challenges. It was like difficult. all childhoods. Yeah, like all childhoods, yes. And then I think maybe for me that was a good thing too because, you know, it gave me this um, desire to connect with the walls inside of me. Well, that, that was going you to know. be my next question. Mm -hmm. When and where did you discover your creativity and the power of your imagination and this ability to write? I think you're asking the wrong question. <laughs> okay. Yes. I think the question you should ask is when did this creativity discover me? <laughs> because um, I like that. I just feel like this is something I just grew up doing. Mm. Right? I was just born into it. It wasn't like something I at one point said, oh, this is what I want to be. Right? It was just something I realized I was doing. And then, yes, there was a point where you say, okay, you, this is what I'm actually doing, so this is what I want to continue mm. doing. You know, there was a point where that was deliberate, and that point was very clear. To Did me. your parents want you to be something else? Because they weren't quite sure about yeah. this thing you're talking they, about. They wanted me to be a doctor. Right. Right. And that's, that's usually the thing. If you're great... Well, I can see you with a stethoscope <laughs> and a sort of white <laughs> overall. I could see myself like... 30 years ago, like that, but not anymore. Yes. Yeah. Well, we're glad. Um, I mean, well, I glad mean, in the sense that, you know, that you, you were able to To do something also. different. Yeah, to do something know. different. But, but yeah. I mean, today, of course, you have much more international eminence as a result of the power of your prose. But do you mm. also have greater influence and greater cultural clout in Nigeria as a result of that? soaring global profile that you clearly have? I don't know. That, that is not my place to say. <laughs> um, I think people, people will be able to judge better. Mm. Um, well, I, I think you have. Well, Certainly. Thank you. I, I think your, your influence is, is much greater than, than that of a lot of people who haven't reached the same level of writing capacity that you have. Is, is that a good thing or bad thing? I think it's a very good thing. Oh, okay. Well, I thank think it's you a then. very good thing. Yeah, and, thank and, you. And be, I, it makes you, you look like you makes you a little bit squeamish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying I, I'm to sorry, do that. It's, it's just, you know, the way um, we were brought up, you know, you just don't talk about yourself yeah. like that. You don't sing your own praises. You just do your stuff and let other people But you're, you're it. public property now. You're in the public domain. Yeah, that's, that's kind of hard to negotiate, right? It's, <laughs> it's hard to do it because, you know, you come from this background and mm. then suddenly you no longer have that privacy to do um, the things you normally would want to do ordinarily. And uh, <coughs> you have to measure your words carefully and, uh, you know, you are now subject to different kinds of interpretation. Absolutely. And we're watching you very closely. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, I want to thank you very much indeed. It's been thank fascinating you, talking with you. It's Congratulations you. on the work thank that you're you. doing. And please let me have a copy, and I'll pay we'll, for it, of we'll, your latest we'll, book. We'll and that's that the now. creative writer and journalist Abubakar mm -hmm. Adam Ibrahim. That's it for this edition of The Arise Interview. Join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja and around the world. Bye-bye and thank you for watching.